Hello everybody, welcome to our next video on the cross product. So in this video, I'm going to give you a more compact formula for computing the cross product. I know last video was probably a little too wonky, and that formula seemed a little bit too long and annoying, and yeah, it is. So in this video, I'm going to give you another way to calculate a cross product. So let's find, we find that through a lot, through a couple of algebraic substitutions and techniques, we find that the cross product A cross B is given by the magnitude of A multiplied by the magnitude of B multiplied by the sine of the angle theta between the two vectors. So this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is another way or a definition of the cross product of two vectors in terms of the angle between them. So notice if we know that we know the cross product between two um two vectors, we could solve for the angle between them. That's basically what this equation allows us to do. So now I want to give you a more geometric interpretation of the dot product. So to do this, I'm gonna to have to draw out a three-dimensional grid. Oh yeah, that's something that we should keep in mind. The cross product is only defined for three dimensions. So you write that over here. Cross product defined only in 3D space. You can't take a cross product in the plane. You have to take it in 3D space. Okay, so keep this in mind, please. All right, so now with that out of the way, let's get on to drawing our coordinate axes. Let me delete this over here. All right, my ruler, here we go. Here's our x-axis, here's our y-axis. I'm oh, sorry, our z-axis, I apologize. And here is our, here is our y-axis, there it is, okay. Here's our z, here's our x, and here's our y. Okay, so now let's say I have our two vectors, vector A and vector B, and let's say that they only have, let's say that they are, they lie in the xy plane, okay? They can lie anywhere, I just want to make this, make them lie in the xy plane because it's a bit easier to draw for an introduction video. So here is vector A, and then of course we have our vector B over here. Let's put B. Looking like that. Oh, it's gotta be a different color though. Perfect. All right. Vector B. And the angle between them is theta. All right. Now remember how in the last video I told you that the answer when you take the cross product between two vectors, you obtain uh, well, this actually up here is kind of a bit of a mistake. This is just the magnitude of the cross product because the cross product gives you a vector as an answer. So answer is, or the cross product is a vector. Now, where does that vector lie? That vector lies orthogonal, orthogonal, well, let me, let me erase that. Is a vector orthogonal to the plane containing A and B? Now, remember, orthogonal, all it means is, is it meets at a right angle. It meets the plane containing A and B, A and B at a right angle. It's orthogonal to it. Remember that term from a couple of videos ago? So if you were to take the dot product of the vector that you get from the cross product of a and b, you would get a dot product of zero. So if I was to draw this vector, remember in the last video I said, let's say that the cross product was vector v, this vector would be orthogonal to the plane containing a and b. And in this case, it doesn't always have to be the z-axis. In this case, I just drew it like this because it's easier to draw. And it's easier for you to visualize. 
this would be the vector v, which is equal to, or which is the cross product of vector a with vector b. And its magnitude would be, would be calculated by magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of the angle between them. And if I was to write this over here, this would be the magnitude, this would be the magnitude of vector v. So let me write that like this, perfect, right? And we could even write this with the, the right hand rule, but that, that's a whole other case. But this is just the basics of, the, of a geometric definition of the cross product. When you take the cross product of two vectors, you obtain another vector, which is orthogonal to the plane containing the vectors that you just crossed at one another. And once again, the cross product is only defined in three dimensional space because how would you get a vector that's orthogonal to the plane containing A and B if you were to do this in two dimensions? You can't do that. So only use the cross product in three dimensional space. And this is a more compact way of calculating such a cross product, the magnitude of the vector that you get. So I hope this was quite helpful. In the next video, we're going to start practicing with it. See you then.